are you still drawing boxes? That's probably why your architecture diagrams fail. Let's be honest, most architecture diagrams are a disaster. Imagine that you walk in a new team and the only diagrams that they have is from three years ago. So a monolith that they modernize and it's just a distributed mess. Or someone is uh, sending a system overview and at the end it's just a lucid chart diagram with 47 unlabeled arrows. And the arrows are going everywhere. And the consequence is new engineers takes week to ramp up. Teams misunderstands the scope of the things that we need to build and they build something that we don't want. Architecture became a guessing game. Instead, it should be shared knowledge across the teams. That's why your diagram don't work, because you are drawing the wrong boxes, to the wrong audience, at the wrong level. They reflect the creator's perspective, not the needs of the readers. This is where the C4 model flips the game. It's a visual language designed with layers of abstraction. So you can show the right details to the right people at the right time. So in this video, I will introduce you to the technique. But first, let's define what the C4 stands for. It's called C4 because there are four layers in these diagrams. Context, container, component, and code. At the top, we have the context level. This is the big picture, the black box view. You describe your system as a single unit, its purpose, and how it interacts with the external actors, users, other systems, APIs. This is the view I would use when talking to business stakeholders or the tech leadership. It gives them clarity on what the system does and who it serves, without getting lost in technical details. Usually it should answer the questions, what is the scope of software system we are building? Who is using it? What system integration does it need to support? Next is the container level. And no, this container has nothing to do with Docker. Here, you break down the system into runnable applications or services like a front-end web app, a back-end API, a database, and so on. This is where I start having productive discussions with tech leaders and platform teams. It's still abstract, but technical enough to talk about uh, how the system is structured and how responsibilities are split across different parts. At the container level, we can also discuss about uh, the organization, the four team topologies, or how we are going to structure our teams in order to deliver uh, the system that we are expecting uh, to build. It should answer the questions, what are the major technology building blocks? What are their responsibilities? And how do they communicate? Then we go deeper into the component level. Inside each container, what are the logical building blocks? Think about features, modules, or internal services. This is the level where developers usually get involved. We start talking about responsibilities, interfaces, and collaboration boundaries inside each application. Finally, there's the fourth C, code level. This is the most detailed view in the C4 model, but in reality, it's rarely used. In my experience, most teams don't need code level. If you have model components, well, you have already got 90% of the clarity you need. Code level is meant for very specific situations, documenting internals for audits, or aligning on a critical implementation detail. Most of the time, the component level is already more than enough. But now we need a tool in order to express these things. And for today, I decided to go with Ice Panel. Ice Panel is a, a visual software that enables us to design C4 model properly with guidance. And that's the part that I love the most about uh, this, uh, this tool. But without further ado, let's try to discuss a concrete example. What we're going to talk about is a modernization of an e-commerce. This is uh, what we are going to uh, look at as an example, uh, it will be just uh, uh, the beginning where we already have the e-commerce that uh, has to be modernized. We are going to use, uh, let's say, cloud native solutions and we are going to uh, use Node.js for a few things. So we already have, let's say, uh, some context that is provided by the current context because the developers maybe are already JavaScript developers, they're using Node, etc. And we are just breaking up 
into uh, uh, multiple microservices. Usually what I do is three things. So I try to use um, uh, this mental model where I understand the business part, I understand the architecture characteristics, uh, and I define them where uh, I want to understand better what are the latency requirements or what are the availability, security, where you name it. And finally, I look into tech. And those are the three steps that I take when I start to design a brand new architecture. Now, potentially, if I go in a room with you and I start to design something like this, uh, to say, okay, so we start with the user that uh, we'll uh, access our catalog and then in order to make uh, a, uh, a purchase or place an order uh, is going uh, through the sign up process first and then the checkout uh, and I explain all of this, it might be enough for this meeting. But the reality is we want to do more. We want to have the possibility to uh, explain more details based on the type of uh, audience that we have, uh, what we want to achieve with this modernization, and why we are going to jump into uh, ICE panel for designing uh, our architecture. Let's start with the context view. So as you can see here, we have uh, a very high level design of how our modernization uh, is going on. So we have our new e-commerce that uh, we are going to drill down at the next level of the C4 model that is connected with different external systems. We have, for instance, Contentful, we have Twilio, uh, and, and so on and so forth. We have also some internal system like uh, the fulfillment system. This is uh, uh, part of the monolith and therefore we are not going to touch it. Uh, so we are just signaling the fact that we are going to use for orders uh, if we want to model later on and transform into uh, a modernized system like we have done uh, with the e-commerce, we can then do that. But at this stage, uh, is fine. One thing that I really love about this view is the very coarse grain. So you have an eagle eye view of how the system works. You can explain to uh, the C-suite what is the complexity that you need to handle inside the system. And moreover, if you properly design through C4M model, you can have this nice annotation, like as you can see here, uh, I can have an e-commerce that is connected with bootable parts and then notifying users through to Ilio and send a push notification to the new customer. Now here I'm just showing, uh, clicking around the diagram because it's an interactive diagram that is offered by uh, IcePanel. But at the same time, later on, we are going to see a more powerful tools uh, for uh, dealing with this kind of scenario. One thing that I want to highlight to you is that uh, always design properly the diagram because you will thank yourself later. When you want to add a new feature or a new box, it will be a breeze to do that and it's not going to be as complicated as it uh, usually be. So I highly encourage you to spend time designing proper diagrams because that will provide clarity, will provide uh, simplicity and also uh, will simplify your life in the long run. Now let's drill down uh, to another level from context diagram into the containers diagram. So I'm just and I just entered inside uh, the e-commerce, as you can see, there is a, a big block here. Uh, this is uh, rectangle here, say e-commerce, and all these stuff are the microservices and microfrontends that we have created uh, for our e-commerce so far. They are currently. Uh, available inside AWS, that is the cloud provider of our choice, and we have all the different integration. Now, uh, I've also divided this system in different subdomains or groups, as they are called in, in uh, IcePanel. And here um, I can think about groups like a way for logically divide my system, but also I can have multiple groups that are needed uh, in order to associate a group or a part of the system to teams. That is another capability that you have inside uh, uh, Ice Panel. As you can see here at the bottom, I have teams and I can have, let's say, a team that is responsible for a system or for uh, a specific uh, part of the system or a service, whatever. So that is a very handy feature that you have uh, in order to handle uh, this capability. In every single box, when you select them, you have uh, this area on the right, this panel that uh, shows up and you have here add technology. So over here you can add one and say, okay, so this one is another DynamoDB stream, uh, sorry, DynamoDB table. And here we are. So now you have, uh, and you can add obviously multiple technology that you can search from all of the one, you can create your own if you have your specific technology and so on. Let's try to drill down a bit more about the system. So 
um, we have a, a new customer that wants to browse uh, a specific uh, for a specific product. In this case, a new camera uh, is going to call this catalog mac front end, and then you have a catalog back end, catalog databases, a catalog database, and a catalog metadata. As you can see here, I want to drag your attention that there is this part that I model already uh, as uh, a component diagram and we are going to uh, see that uh, how it works uh, and also we can see that this catalog metadata uh, backend is interacting with fetches data from uh, the CMS and the pump data into uh, personalization uh, SAS. So this is a very uh, clear way to handle that but let me show you also how you can do what you can do with the uh, ice panel. Here there is a capability called flow that imagine is like uh, a sequence diagram that is fully interactive. So let me show you how it works. So I select the flow, then I click play flow. And now I can walk you through all the different steps that are happening for placing an order. So first of all, a new user wants to place an order called the checkout Mac front end, retrieve the server side render version of the checkout page. When they place an order, the first thing that happens is uh, request an order ID to the checkout backend. It is returning uh, the order ID to the checkout front end, therefore to the browser. So that is used in order to, uh, let's say, associate the ID with all everything that's happening uh, after that. Then it's calling a uh, user insert the card details uh, to a uh, an external system. This is ADN, so it's redirecting the user towards the ADN payment part. And what uh, returns is receipt ID. Then it will uh, pass to the checkout backend and uh, now it's ready to store this order. Let's now see how the component level works. So I select a container that in this case is orders manager. And here I've already specified uh, my components inside the specific container. So I created a flow so I can walk you through what I have created. So the first step is uh, selecting the flow and uh, I select the one that I created, the orders manager flow. So as you can see here, I have all the steps available. Now we start to play the flow so I can walk you through what uh, uh, is happening at the component level of this C4 model diagram. So the first step is that the order database, when we store some uh, uh, new order, is sending through the DynamoDB stream. That is a service that enables us to capture any change that is happening into the table, uh, into uh, a, a, an event transformant that in this case uh, is even bridge pipes. Even bridge pipes is a service uh, that AWS created for connecting two services one to one. Uh, it enables also to have uh, uh, the possibility to run a Lambda function uh, while you're receiving a message, or in this case, an event. And uh, in this case, we are leveraging that capability for retrieving some information from an API that is still living inside the monolith and it's the customer's API. So we're going to gather this data uh, from uh, the customer API. And then uh, when the data return, the new message is created with the order and the information of the customer uh, that we needed to augment it with. And we pass this message to the order queue. The idea of using SQS as a queue is because if we have a million of uh, new orders created in a very short amount of time, we don't want to overwhelm uh, some services that maybe doesn't have the throughput that uh, is needed. Uh, and therefore, we want to capture and create this buffer. Uh, so we want to capture these uh, events uh, messages into a queue. And then another even bridge pipes will uh, take in batches these messages and send to an orders orchestrator. This order orchestrator is uh, uh, created with step function. This is another serverless service that enables us to orchestrate uh, the, uh, a bunch of actions. So in this case, we are going to first send data for the push notification to an external uh, system called Twilio that will send the push notification to the user. Secondly, we are going to send data to the fulfillment system that is an internal system that is needed in order to uh, fulfill the order. Then we send the data to the CRM that is used from customer support, sending uh, the uh, marketing email uh, for the order is dispatched and so on and so forth. Now, there is an interesting uh, thing. So sometimes you need to show 
uh, this level of detail with also the future implementation. So for instance, in this case, we want to uh, use another server service that enables us bi-directional communication with Salesforce without using the Salesforce SDK. So we don't have to maintain the code and integrate with all the complexity of the API integration that Salesforce has, but we can do through even bridge because uh, in this case even bridge has the capability uh, to integrate directly with some partners and one of those is salesforce and uh, i can have a bi-directional communication so i send the data from step function to even bridge and then i send the information to to salesforce but now this part is new right so it's a part that we didn't build yet there is an interesting capability of uh, um ice panel for this specific reason so if i go here as you can see there is hide future Right, so I can uh, go into the status, and as you can see, I can tag my element in uh, uh, future, deprecated, removed, or live. This part is the one that is live. So if you can focus uh, in the live part, I can uh, hide the um, the future implementation, or I can show the future implementation. I can focus only on that and show basically uh, what will be the specific thing that we want to build, what are the uh, part of the system that are in play uh, for this specific feature implementation. So if you think about this and you have a more complex system, this feature comes extremely handy because uh, in a, a very few clicks, you can have, uh, you filter out all the noise and you focus on what you really need to discuss with your colleagues. That is spot on in my opinion. Another challenge that I often have uh, is uh, understanding uh, uh, the connection between uh, uh, objects. In this case, uh, I have the orders manager that, as you can see, has different arrows and it's quite pivotal. So if I select that and I go to connection, I can see a list of connection uh, of this uh, orders manager. But it's by far more interesting when I click view dependencies. So now, this one is relatively simple, but imagine when you have like a, a ton of connection and tons of arrows going towards a specific uh, application or uh, system or whatever. Here immediately you can see who is calling and what or this manager in this case is uh, interacting with, uh, how many connections they have, and so on and so forth. So I think this one uh, is extremely interesting because uh, you can see a very detailed view of uh, the integration and the connection. Another cool feature that I really like uh, about uh, Ice Panel is uh, this idea of uh, not just designing in a vacuum, uh, but also integrate this design, this live design and interactive design uh, with the rest of your system. So everyone is using at least one tool uh, that uh, wants to use in order to uh, share information inside the organization. So as you can see, there are multiple uh, integration that we can have, uh, like I don't know, Notion, Atlassian, uh, uh, Miro, SharePoint, etc. But in this case, uh, uh, what I want to show you is this integration. So this panel generates uh, a link. Uh, and then if I copy this link, I go to Notion and go back into my maybe page where I have a bunch of information related to uh, my system. Uh, and I have, uh, let's say, all the different documentation that I've created. I can paste here, send embed. And then at this stage, I have ice panel that is loading inside uh, notion here we are and obviously i can expand it and i can navigate through it so we were at the uh, at the containers uh, level uh, but if for instance i want to go back in the orders manager manager like we were before we can drill down and uh, while i'm updating this diagram it will update uh, uh, with me so that i think is a great feature uh, that uh, helps to keep everything in sync because I have all the uh, same experience that I have in Ice Panel inside uh, my documentation so, and the diagram is always up to date. So this is definitely uh, a well thought process uh, that was integrated uh, uh, by Ice Panel. So kudos to the team. But let me ask you a question. What's the most horrendous diagram you ever seen in your career? If you, like me, you are in the trenches for a while, probably you have some uh, horror stories that you'd like to share. And to be honest, I would like to hear from you, what are those? Because I believe that community is also this idea of sharing not only success, but also failures, because we can learn from them. And on the other hand, I would like to know a great story where communication saved the day, and uh, uh, thanks to that, you were able to deliver your project properly. 
And if you find this approach useful where I take concrete examples on uh, designing architecture and the reasoning behind that, leave a comment below because maybe you're interested in different domain like I don't know, fintech or media entertainment, whatever, and I can share different stories about them because I had the pleasure to work with quite a few companies in those industries as well. See you in the next one.